I like to think I don't have an agenda, but I do have my own politics, of course, and my politics are strong borders, stop migration, defend your land, defend Judeo-Christian culture. So that, that's really my bias. So you are an extreme right uh, thinker or <laughs> commentator? <laughs> no, and that's what the mainstream media, of course, would say. The mainstream media would say, far right, extreme right, uh, ooh, over there on the extremists, they call you a racist or an Islamophobe or a bigot or a zealot or a misogynist, every label that you could possibly have. But, you know, I, I know I'm none of those things. I know I'm not, I don't even understand what far right is. Are you in a minority? I don't think I'm in the minority. I believe there are 20, well, I, I more or less know, there are 20 million people in the UK who also are frustrated that they don't have a voice. What do you think, for instance, about the British media, and the BBC, the other uh, news organizations? The British media is crazy. Crazy? Utterly crazy. The BBC is utterly crazy. They are a prop propaganda vehicle for the state. No better, no worse. They, they are, at least in North Korea, mm -hmm, you got your propaganda for free. Where I come from, you have to pay for your propaganda on the BBC. They can't stand Israel, for example. And it's very clear they can't stand Israel. And if a Palestinian stabs an Israeli, we'll hear Palestinians shot dead in West Bank, we won't hear the first bit where the Palestinians stabbed an Israeli. They'll remove that bit because it's an inconvenient truth. Our BBC state broadcaster is a propaganda tool for the state, no question, and I have to pay for it, as do 20 million other people, possibly a little bit like me, who know that it's an utter bunch of nonsense coming from the left. But, Miss Hopkins, I know that you are a television personality. You appeared, you were invited to uh, television and radio studios. Why do you com What is the complaint? <laughs> I have no complaint. I have no complaint. I just recognize that the ability for someone like me to appear on certain shows is now very limited because we aren't, people aren't keen on having people with opinions like mine to be given airtime. You know, our media does suffer from incredible bias. The reporting on Israel, you would, it would horrify Israelis if they could hear the things that are said. On Al-Quds Day, you know, just a few weeks ago, uh, our Muslim mayor, Sadiq Khan... The mayor of London. The mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. He's very short. He allowed Hezbollah flags to be paraded down the centre of London. That's the country I live in. We have a Muslim police association in my country. White Christian, Judeo-Christian culture is being erased from Britain. And so people like me are no longer wanted in the press. Do I hear a racist remark from you? In what way? In what way? Uh, the way you are talking about the Muslims in London. Hmm. I believe that they are equal uh, citizens. I believe Muslims in London can be equal citizens, but what we're finding very different, difficult in London and in the rest of the UK, actually, is to differentiate those who are our friends and those who seek to hurt us. What do you advise the so-called London authorities? Uh, one, we need to get rid of Sadiq Khan. It is not possible for a Muslim mayor to run our city legitimately. You may have heard him speak out against Trump, for example. He says, we don't want Trump here. We don't want Trump's visit. That is not correct. There are many lovely people in the rest of the UK, a place I come from called the rest of the UK. We want Trump to come. We are massive Trump supporters. There's lots of supporters of Israel in the UK. But we don't have a voice. The mayor of London does not speak for the UK. And the second thing we need to do in the UK is when we have a terrorist attack, is do what uh, Benjamin Netanyahu does or Israel does. Get the terrorist and kick him out. Take the family of the terrorist and kick him out. Find the imam at the mosque who's preaching extremist hate and kick him out too. And do we do that? No. They are human beings. Returning like jihadis. You and me. No, sorry, we disagree. With different religions. We disagree. Returning jihadis to me, 
They're not human beings. They're feral humans. I do not want them near my daughters. I'm sorry, I don't agree with you at all. People would say that your remarks are racist. I don't mind if you want to call me racist. I, that's fine. It makes no difference to me because it's your label. It's what you think. That's fine. If you think that, that's fine. I know I'm not. I know that I'm an honest truth speaker for my children. I know that I'm a good mum for my children. I know that I love my country. I joined the military to fight for my country. I went through Sandhurst and joined the Intelligence Corps. So I know what I'm fighting for. And it doesn't matter if you call me fat or ugly or thin or a Nazi or a racist or an Islamophobe or anti-Semite. I'm all those things sometimes to people. I know I'm none of those things. News organizations in England paid damages because of your remarks. Mm. I don't regret anything I've said. I don't regret anything that I've done. And I don't even regret being fired. Because sometimes if my opinions don't suit you anymore and you, you don't need me in your organizations because advertisers will leave you and we need to protect advertisers, commercially I understand that. But it's not going to stop me. I believe that this is your first visit uh, to Israel. Yes, I know. It's very annoying. So I'm sure I'm supposed to be Jewish, and I'm not. I just got the nose. All my friends in the UK are Jewish, but I feel like I've been here forever. But I, I'm, I, it's my first time here, and we've brought um, 60, 65 supporters of Rebel Media, my supporters, supporters of Israel, actually, we just get told all the bad stuff. Israel's a monster. The IDF's a monster. Bibi's a monster. And then you see these people. We went to the a ceremony where the, uh, the Air Force get their wings. The new recruits get their wings. And everyone came away in tears because it was so... Your country has got such pride in its military and pride in families. You do families brilliantly. You have so much respect for the family and the mother. We, we don't have that. So the image of uh, Israel in the eyes of uh, many news organizations in the world is distorted. Uh, in, in from the mainstream, if I give my personal opinion yes. from my media, uh, the IDF are the uh, aggressors. The IDF are the terrorists. The IDF is the images of the IDF shooting at women and children, not reminding people that those women and children are being used as a front for Hamas as they operate from the Gaza Strip, throwing their bombs. What we don't get is the other side, which is all I'm trying to say is there is another side. I don't mind that you want to see that side, but what I would quite like sometimes is for someone to show the other side. And so that's a little bit about, I guess, what I try and do. What would you advise the Israeli officials uh in order to correct or to, to correct the image of Israel. Yes, sort it out. I'd like to get hold of, I don't know who's responsible for your media, your communications, your... Who is responsible for government communications? Well, is I it you? Well, I think that the government is responsible for, right. for the whole state. Yes? The, the government, okay, fine. But who is the person in the government that heads up communications? The Prime Minister. Okay, who is their person, though? He can't do everything. Whoever it is, I'd like to get them and sit them here and tell them what they need to do because they're not doing a good job. They're not doing a good job. They are allowing the other side, the Palestinians, ha uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Palestinian refugees, they're allowing them to win the media war. They need to step up their game significantly. Start working out how you link good journalists, not, not me, someone neutral with people who tell another side of the story. Start enabling the world to listen because the other side are winning. I thank you very much, uh, Miss Katie Hopkins. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you.